Oh, sorry about that. All the poison ivy oil got me a little itchy. My name is Ryan. I'm from Ask Your MD. And thanks for coming by today. Subscribe below if you like any of the content. Today we have to talk about part two of poison ivy. In my last video, which is shown here, and check that out if you haven't seen that yet, I talked about how to identify poison ivy and what kind of reactions you can have to it. Today, we're going to talk about treatment and prevention. So let's get started. So remember that if you brush up against the leaves of poison ivy and the Urochia oil gets onto your skin or your clothing, you can go ahead and get the rash. The most important thing once you're exposed is to take off all of your clothes that have been contaminated or brushed up against the oil, if it's socially appropriate. This includes your hat, your gloves, your socks, anything that may have been touched. Put that in the laundry, use some mild detergent to help get that rid of that. Then, wash your hands in any other contaminated skin with soap and water within 10 minutes, or as quick as you can, because that increases the likelihood that you'll get rid of the oil. Make sure, importantly, that in order to prevent self-contaminating later on, you get underneath your nails because the oil can stay underneath this area and be a reason why people think that they're spreading the rash when in reality they're just spreading the oil because it wasn't adequately cleaned. The next thing you can try to help give some soothing and some comfort, cool compresses over the area can help reduce some swelling initially. You can also try using calamine lotion, to help provide, or menthol, to provide some comfort. Some people like to provide some additional comfort with hydrocortisone. You can get it over the counter at any pharmacy. It's a topical steroid that you can use a thin layer twice a day, but most of the time it won't be strong enough and you'll need a prescription medication from your doctor in order to really get at the underlying cause of the poison ivy rash. If you're having tons of itching at night, you can try some Benadryl, but just be careful. Some people, especially as they get older, may have some more side effects than they have benefit from Benadryl. And it's an antihistamine medication, so it's not actually getting at the underlying cause of poison ivy, which is not a histamine-related allergic reaction. It's a different type. So Benadryl may help for some people, but not for all. But you can try it safely in a low dose if you'd like to. Finally, if you're having vesicles that I showed you in the last video, these little fluid-filled blisters, and they start to drain on their own, you can go to the pharmacy and pick up something called aluminum acetate. This is an astringent medication which helps reduce some of the fluid in these vesicles and dry them up. And if you do this, you can use it 20 minutes a day up to three times a day, and you may have some relief in that way. I would say if you do have an extensive reaction and you have a rash that's very painful or spread extensively, you should talk to your doctor because some people do need oral prescription steroids or stronger steroids that you can't get over the counter. Here's a quick treatment summary. Number one, remove all contaminated clothing. Number two, wash exposed skin quickly with soap and water. Number three, Clean thoroughly underneath your nails to make sure you're removing all of the extra oil. Number four, use a cool compress and you can try menthol and calamine lotion for comfort. Number five, consider low dose Benadryl if it's safe for you, if the itching is severe, especially at bedtime. Number six, topical hydrocortisone, a steroid, may be helpful. Number seven, speak with your doctor if your symptoms are severe or extensive to get additional help. What's the prevention? Well, prevention is pretty easy. Just don't go outside and stay away from plants. But that's never really as fun. So some things you can do, keep in mind that clothing, pets, can be a reservoir for continued spread of different oils. So that's one thing to make sure you're cleaning those objects and those animals thoroughly. Using thick barrier creams such as bentoquatum is a medication that you can get over the counter. You would apply it 20 minutes before you go outside, almost like sunscreen, and reapply after four hours. It forms a, a barrier that prevents the oil from really irritating your skin and causing the reaction. And it's just washed off with soap and water. Finally, if you're gardening, you can use thick vinyl gloves rather than rubber or latex because rubber and latex do not prevent the oil from touching your skin, whereas thick vinyl gloves do. Finally, here's a prevention summary. Number one, avoid areas with high poison ivy concentration and cover your exposed skin when in high risk areas. Thoroughly clean animal hairs and your clothing to remove all oil. 
You can use bentoquatum as a barrier cream if desired. And when working in a high risk area, use thick vinyl gloves. Wow, you're really becoming an expert now from COVID antibodies and what to expect with COVID this summer and keeping yourself and your family safe to sunscreen and now poison ivy, which you're not gonna get because you can identify the leaves. This is great, I hope you had some fun. Come on back if you have any other questions or comments and I'll see you next week.